Hey everyone, thank you for making it to part two. Today we're going to go over some basic math and absolute versus relative cell referencing. And this is what gives, and I must stress this, Excel its true power. All right, so we could think of Excel as one giant calculator, making our lives easier. Excel, though, doesn't necessarily know its calculator. For example, I will type 3 plus 4, and nothing really happens. However, if I tell Excel that it's being in it should be a calculator, it will know. So that's that's um, the first lesson. You need to start every formula, every calculation, with an equal sign. So now when I do type 3 plus 4, we get a sum of 7. Excel knew to calculate it. This is a little tedious, though. I don't want to have to type every number. So what else can I do? What are alternatives? I can write 3 and 4 here and use cell references. Now this doesn't save too much time in just a simple addition, but over time it does a lot for you, and you can see that later on. We will go down the list, and it goes 3 minus 4 to make sure we have this all right. Now when it comes to multiplication, what we use is we use an asterisk, and that is shift 8. Again, we use an asterisk to signify multiplication. Oof, that was sloppy. We're using cell referencing for this one. We're not typing. Division, self-explanatory too. We use a slash. Equals three divided by four, or H5 divided by H6. The importance of that is, if I change this to 12, this formula updates. Whereas this doesn't, it's still fixed on 3 to 4. I'll bring this back to 4, and they will equal each other. For powers, what we do is we use the caret symbol, or that is shift 6. So 3 to the 4th. J5 to the J6. So as you can see, this method is a lot more dynamic, it's a lot more flexible, uh, it saves you time in the long run. And this is what we call cell referencing. Now let's use cell referencing. So here's a table, before anything, let's, uh, let's clean it up and make it a little bit easier to use or digest. As you can see, borders and alignment do huge things for uh, simplification. The first thing we're going to do is fill out this addition column. And that would just be A plus B, or number A plus number B. Now, I don't want to have to type this out every time. I think that's uh, that's tedious. If you have hundreds and thousands of uh, calculations, it doesn't make sense. So what can you do to speed that up? You get the formula that you like, or the formula that uh, is accurate, and you drag it down. A way to spot check this is cl by clicking on one of the um, one of the answers calculations and clicking into this FX bar. This breaks down each element of the calculation. So that was pretty easy. Now what if we want to multiply all of these by two? We don't have a we don't have a column in here with two values so we can't just say hey times two and then drag down. We're using this one number up here. So let's try it out. We want to multiply C4 times d2. Alright, that looks like it works. Now let's drag it down to see if this works. Huh, sadly it doesn't. The reason being is we set this up using relative cell references. For example, if we look at this calculation, actually, for example, we look at this calculation, what we're doing is we're multiplying the value to the left times the value two times up. This example confirms that. Multiplying C8 times the value 2 up. We don't want a relative reference, we want an absolute. We want it to be always referencing this D2 cell. How can we do that? And that goes up to the initial setup of the first formula. What we do is we lock this. We want to make sure that it doesn't go down and up. And you do that simply by adding dollar signs in front of each up and down and left and right. The D represents it will be locked left and right with columns, and the 2 represents that it will be locked up and down with rows. Now, 
We have that as a proper formula. Looks like it's locked. It is absolutely referencing that. Bring it down. And there we go. Now we can spot check it and it makes sense. Now that is the power of absolute referencing. We will show you again what absolute referencing can do. If you've ever worked with a linear equation, you've heard of the form y equals mx plus b. We want to fill out potential coordinates, or we want to fill out coordinates that satisfy this equation. So what you can do is just plug in random x values and solve for y. What we're going to do is say, hey, you always multiply by 5, that's a coefficient to the variable. So what we're going to do is make sure that this is locked. A quick way to do that is by using F4. And as you can see, I'm going to hit F4 through the whole cycle. It gives you the options. It rotates through. We're going to want it absolutely fixed up and down and left and right. That's why we have dollar signs in front of both the letter and the number. We're going to multiply that times the x variable. Then we're also going to add the b part. This also should be locked. It has the very same function, the very same nature as this situation. So we're going to use F4 and lock it. Now, since we set this up properly in the beginning, we should just be able to drag and drop and be on our way. Let's do one spot check, just in case we set it up wrong. We'll use 5. The value of 5 plugged into this equation, 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27. That is accurate, and we can check this by looking at each color coded element. Now, you guys should be pretty comfortable with cell referencing. You can understand that Excel can do one calculation, you drag and drop, and do it a hundred more times. Um, you'll see a lot more deeper as you continue this journey.